deal with the SEPA exam paper. I uh, hope you find it um, useful and benefit. And please try to take into account all the advice we're going to uh, present today. Hi, this is our lesson today. We are going to look at SEPA like mock exam. This lesson is prepared by me. Uh, it's, sorry, it's presented by myself and prepared by Mr. Farid Al Bili. We are going to look at SEPA like mock exam. This is, as uh, I think by now you know, this is our last lesson. So we are going to deal with the exam really. But before looking at the exam, we are going to get, uh, talk about some tips to answer multiple choice questions for grade 12 students, okay? Because of course you know that all uh, the questions we are going, you are going to, to uh, have are all multiple choice, or in other words, MCQs, and how to deal with MCQs in a way to uh, achieve correct answers and of course uh, manage your time, okay? So let's look at these tips. And of course other words for tips is Again, uh, advice, okay? So, first is read all exam directions and instructions carefully, okay? And I'm sure by now most of uh, all your teachers talk to you about SIPA exam and the things you are to deal with on the day. And again, you as on the day, you try to read all the directions and instructions carefully. The most important thing here is never assume you know what the directions say. Don't you ever think that you know everything, okay? You try to look at the directions, the instructions, and be careful with everything the teachers on the day tell you to do. Because on the exam day, the whoever going to uh, be there, your teachers or the examiners, they are going to give you lots of instructions Please try to know and try to think of every one uh, of these instructions and never assume you know what the directions say, okay? Because sometimes you understand something and you find that it is completely different, okay? Also, listen closely to any verbal instructions. So, sometimes the people on the exam day, we, we call them the examiners, they can just give you some verbal, and we mean by verbal is like words, okay? They say things to you. Do this, don't do this, use this pen, pencil, don't use this pencil. So these we call them verbal instructions. So you have to listen very carefully to all these instructions because really these are very important. Again, Make sure you carefully read and follow all directions and any special instructions for the exam. So make sure that you carefully read them, okay? And you follow all the directions and any special instructions for the exam. So try to follow everything. Don't forget things, okay? Because sometimes the examiners tell students things and what happens is that they, they sometimes forget them so they don't follow these instructions and these directions and at the end they lose some of their marks and of course in the exam we want you all to get full mark. Also make sure you understand the directions and instructions before you start to answer the questions. So. Uh, of course, all the directions are, and uh, the instructions are going to be written in English and Arabic as well. So you can uh, understand both. Again, if you don't understand anything, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a wise idea to ask one of the examiners or one of the teachers what uh, this word or this instruction means. So be careful with these uh, things and try to Listen and follow all the directions and instructions. Also, do not mark more than one answer for each question on a multiple choice exam. So on the, on the SIPA day, because you, are, you know by now you are going to uh, choose uh, one answer only and you have to fill in the bubble. So you don't mark more than one answer because if you do, then what happens is that both answers are wrong. 
So be careful with this. You only choose one answer. If you are not sure, is it A or B, then decide and choose one and that's it. Make sure the choice you mark on your answer sheet matches the questions you are answering in the test paper. Because sometimes, again, in the answer sheet or the bubble sheet, what happens is that you find yourself uh, forgetting one of the questions, and so you mark all the others, and so they, they all start to be wrong. Okay? So make sure that the question you are answering, which is, let's, let's say, number 13, is the same question you are bubbling uh, in the answer sheet 13, okay, and not any other number. So this is very important. Also, mark your answer sheet carefully and make sure your marks completely fill the spaces. So, of course, here your mark, it's like the, the uh, black mark you are, you like filling the bubble, okay? So make sure that this mark, what the filling of the bubble, completely marked, okay? And, of course, you, you answer your uh, bubble sheet in a very careful way. So make sure of this. There is no here two correct answers, and so I don't know which is the correct answer, then I will choose both, and the teachers will choose the correct one. No, please don't do that. Also, Check your work to make sure that the number of the question you are answering in the exam paper matches the choice you are mar marking on your answer sheet. So it's the same. So you try to check your work, okay? And make sure that the number you are, you are answering on the, on the question paper is the same as the number uh, on, your, on, the, question, um, on, the, on the, uh, the, the question paper is the same as the number in the bubble sheet. Make sure you record all your answers on the answer sheet. So make sure that you answer all questions, okay? And that you don't put any answers on the, on the other sheet, on the test paper, because nobody will look at it, okay? So the most important one is the bubble sheet itself and not the question sheet, because some of the students in the, mock, in the last mock exam what they did is that they put the answers into the question paper. And so maybe if you do that, you can lose time. And maybe you forget to copy your answers from the, from the question paper to the bubble sheet, which is the most important one. The other one is not important. Nobody's going to check the question paper, OK? But the bubble sheet is the one which is going to be checked. So if you forget something, then it means that you did not answer it. And so you lose. Again, avoid making stray pencil marks on your answer sheet. The scanning machine may interpret these marks to be your answers. Also, while you are answering uh, on the bubble sheet, you try to avoid making any, any kind of, of marks, okay? Stray pencil marks, it means any shape of marks. Sometimes some of the students, they just write things or they draw things or whatever. Don't do that because, as you know, the, your bubble sheet is going to be checked through a scanner. And so these, these things can, uh, can be mis, mis, uh, misunderstood. And so you may lose marks. So we don't want that. Again, the, most imp the second most important thing is, to, is your time. So please try to budget your time wisely. Try to manage your time wisely. I always tell my students that. Try to allocate time for everything. Don't make things um, t take over other things, okay? Sometimes you feel that this question is difficult. Let me think of it and you take more time, which is completely wrong, okay? Use all the time allotted for the exam. If you have extra time, cover up your answers and actually rework your answers. So this is again one one of uh, one another advice you try to do is that you use all the time needed in order to answer your 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 uh, work. Okay, if you have time, if you feel that there is time, okay, revise again, cover and answer but answer them again and see if your your answers are correct or wrong. Okay, so you try to use all the time. Again. 
budget your time so that you will be able to complete the entire exam. So you try to manage your time to be able to finish it all. Be careful, the reading part is a bit long. It needs more time of, of, uh, more time of, uh, of the exam, okay? Uh, so please, you try to finish as quickly as possible the grammar and vocabulary part and save time for the reading because really it will take more time. Also, try to save time to review your answers before submitting your exam. So if you finish as quickly as possible, then there, will, there is time to review, to look at your, uh, your, your work, try to correct it if you have any mistakes, and try to look at things and review your work, revise it. Allow time to check spelling and grammar, and this, this is going to be in the writing task, of course, because you, are, you aren't going to write anything, so there is no spelling or grammar except in the writing task where you have to write the essay. Also, use a lot of time wisely. Make every effort to pace yourself so you can have a chance to answer every section within the time limit. So you try to use the time and just give yourself every effort to pace yourself, okay? So let's say you have two hours and a half one hour for grammar vocabulary, one hour for reading, and half an hour for writing. You try to go like that and make the effort to manage your time because really, really this is very important. Again, read each question carefully, which is very important here, okay? Read the questions carefully. Read over all of your options. Okay, so you read the question, and of course, when I say read your questions carefully, it doesn't. This doesn't take time, much time. Okay, you try to read carefully, and again, try to do it as fast as you can. So read each question carefully, read over all of your options. Okay, read them over, reread questions. Okay, you look again at the question. In this case, I of course we don't say reread, but it's like skim through them okay scan them quickly quickly okay the here the key word is quickly huh eliminate highly unlikely answers and i think while we were doing our uh, past lessons i always told you to eliminate to remove the, the the answers you feel they are completely wrong okay so if you eliminate these then it will be very easy for you to know the correct answer even if you don't understand the word or the question Okay, so eliminate highly unlikely answers. It's, sometimes it's clear that this answer is going to be wrong. Read, read each question carefully and thoroughly. So you try to read each question carefully and try to give yourself time to think over the question. Okay, this is again very important. Now we are going to look at section one, which is grammar. Of course, my tip here, or my advice, is that you try to go through the test or through uh, the exam as the order uh, of the exam paper itself. So you start by section one, which is grammar. And then, of course, grammar has to do with grammar, parts of speech, and vocabulary. They are all in section, one section, okay? They are all like one question, okay? And then section two is the reading, where you have four passages to answer. And then the last section is writing. So my very important advice is that you go through the, order, the same order as the exam paper. You start by grammar, vocabulary, and parts of speech because you'll find some very easy questions and you can do them very easily and quickly, okay? Then move to the more, to the more challenging tasks, which is the reading, because in the reading you will need time to think, read, skim, scan in order to find the correct answer. And remember, the, there are four reading passages, okay? So it's not something you can do it very quickly. And then you go to the writing, which will take only 30 minutes, okay? Because some teachers 
they advise their students to start by writing. I think it's a bit dangerous because if you start by writing, you will uh, give more time for, for the writing and you all the time think about the writing and when you start writing, you just forget, for, forget yourself and you take more time. So please keep writing at the end, okay? So let's look at section one, which is grammar. Uh, in our lesson today, we divided the parts into sections, okay? But in the exam, section one is grammar, vocabulary, and parts of speech together, okay? So in the grammar part, you'll have 40 questions. In the part of speech part, you'll have only 10. So let's say if you look at grammar and parts of speech, they are about 50 questions, okay? And then we'll look at the vocabulary later on. So let's look at the first part, which is grammar. Of course, here we couldn't today, we, co we, co we couldn't give you all the numbers, so we just put, uh, it chose some of, the, um, some of the questions. We're going to look at them because we can't, because of the time, we can't give you the whole exam, okay? So it says, number one here, I usually like reading adventure stories, but this one is really A, bored, B, bore, C, boring, and D, boards. Okay? So, here in this part, they are really looking at which word you're going to use, which adjective you are to use. Is, is it the adjective ending in ED or the adjective ending in ING? Okay? So, really, in order to answer such a question, it is very wise of you to just look at the quest, at the sentence and try to figure out what they are asking me to do. So really, they are asking you to look at these two only. So B and D, you eliminate. Okay, remember the word eliminate, you just remove. You don't think, of, you, you don't think uh, about them. So you have only A to look at and C. So, I usually like reading adventure stories, but this one is really what? Here, am I, am I talking about the feeling of the person or about the book in general? Yes, I, I heard you. So the answer is going to be, is really boring. Because in this sentence, I have to use the adjective ending in ing because this adjective really is the correct answer here. And because, again, when I, when I use adjectives ending in ing, it means that I'm talking about something in general. Number two, there are no pencils in the classroom. I'll get A, some, B, any, C, no, and D, none. Again, if you look at this, at this question, it's again, you, can ha you have about two answers or two options here where you, which you should really eliminate, you should forget about, okay? So, you have to look and try to eliminate, to remove the correct answer, or to, to remove the answers which uh, are totally wrong, yeah? So here we say, there are no pencils in the classroom I'll get. Of course, you can't use C and you can't use D. So C and D are wrong answers, so you don't use them. So you eliminate C and D. So sure, then the correct answer is going to be A, some. There are no pencils in the classroom, I'll get some. Number three, I didn't go to the beach this morning, it was raining. A, because, B, if, C, whereas, and D, so. Again, you have tried to think what they are asking me to do here, what are they testing me? In. Okay, so sure, there are two other answers you are to forget about, which is definitely B and C. And you try to look what are they asking me to do here. So the correct answer is going to sure to be because I didn't go to the beach this morning because it was raining. Number four. You need to leave six if you want to get there on time. By the way, here six means 
uh, o'clock okay so it's it's uh, six o'clock so it's a on b between c at and d from so again you try to look at the statement and try to eliminate the answers which aren't correct or which you feel that they are completely wrong and then make your uh, your choice so you need to leave six if you want to get there on time so sure it's going to be at six because here it's six o'clock number five this isn't my mobile phone it's a your b yours c u and D, your, and of course here we have a contraction, your, it means you are, okay, apostrophe here, be careful, this is a short form, contraction, so this isn't my mobile phone, it's, so what do you think the correct answer is going to be, what, what are they testing me in here, yeah, sure, it's the, uh, the uh, pronoun. So is it D? No, sure you thought. D is one of the answers you are to eliminate, to forget about. What about you? It is a pronoun, yes, but this is a subject and I can't put it here. So in this sentence, I should use a possessive pronoun. Okay, so the only possessive pronoun here is B. Be careful, your is a possessive adjective. Okay, and you, you try to know the differences between possessive adjectives and possessive pronouns. Yeah? So the correct answer is yours. So this isn't my mobile phone, it's yours. Number six. Dubai and Sharjah are in the UAE. A, nor. B, neither. C, both. And D or, of course, in this, in the, this is, I think, it's one of the easiest uh, sentences you can look at because all there are three options which are completely wrong. Of course, as I think I heard one of you saying, A, B, D are completely wrong. You cannot put any of these in the sent in this sentence. So the correct answer is going to be, as again you said, both. Very good. You have both. Dubai and Sharjah are in the UAE. Okay? If, I have, if I'm going to use neither, then I have to negate the sentence. Okay? Number seven. He has been at Ittisalat since 1998. A. Work. B, work, C, works, D, working. Again, part of the tense is given up there, so it shows that this is an action which started some time in the past, but be careful that this action is still continuous. So, has been what? What do you think? Can I say has been worked? No, sure not. What about has been works? Definitely no. Has been work? Sure not. So we have A, B, and C. All these are very wrong answers. So again, the correct answer is going to be D, which is he has been working at Ittisalat since 1998. Okay? This tense is present perfect continuous where the action started somewhere in the past and in this case we have it started in 1998 but be careful that he's still doing it he's still working it in the salat he did not quit so that's why he has been working number eight i didn't enjoy the film because the people behind me were talking the time okay a each, B, all, C, hall, and D, every. 
Okay, so again in this sentence, you can very easily eliminate some of the of the uh, wrong answers. Okay, so you have A and D are two words which can never be put in this place. Okay, and I think some of you said that now. So each and every is completely wrong. What about B and C? All and whole. So, can I say they were talking the old time? Of course not. Because I have the article the, I can't put all. Okay? So, I have to use then whole time. So, they were talking the whole time. Okay? Which means all the time, really. Number nine. Your study time can help you succeed at university. A plans, B to plan, C planning, and D plan. Okay? So here, what I, again, you try to ask yourself a question. What are they really testing me in? So, of course, here at the beginning of the sentence, they are testing you in the use of infinitive or gerund. Which one to use? So, sure, A is one of the very wrong answers you are not to use that plans okay because plans is the third person singular shape of the verb it should have a subject before it yeah and of course plan again couldn't be correct so which one to use what do you really start your sentence with if you don't have a subject there is something you have to start your sentence with and it is it we use it in the place of the subject, okay? So, yes, it is planning, which is the gerund. So, planning your study time can help you succeed at university and not only university in your whole life. Number 10, I really enjoy the global village and I'd like to go time. A, others, B, other, C, one, and D, another. Also, as now I, I pointed out, some of really of these sentences, there are about two answers, which or two options, which really couldn't fit in the sentence. As, as I think you saw by until now, we, uh, we dealt with 10 statements, 10 questions. And in these 10 questions, mostly, most of the time, you have two answers which are completely wrong. In this case, we have A, others, you can't use it at all here, and one, again, is completely wrong. So you are left with two options, which is B and D. So is it, I'd like to go other time or another time? If you say other time, is this English? Does it sound English? Sure, it's not. So then the correct answer is going to be another. So I'd like to go another time. Number 11. The number of cars on the road growing. So we have A to B, B R, C is, and D where. And Really, personally, I think, and uh, of course, Mr. Khaled, we, when we were discussing this together, we thought that this, this sentence is, could be one of the problematic areas in the exam, okay? Because for you, you can just, you look at number of cars, and you feel that, um, okay, we're going to choose R, but be careful that we aren't after cars, the subject here is number, okay? So be careful with this, because... Some of the students, they can say that, okay, the number of cars on the road are growing, which is really not, not correct, because the number, okay, number is the subject, so it's singular, so it should be is. So be careful with such, such uh, statements, such questions, because really you can fall into, some, into uh, making some mistakes. Number 12. 
I am very pleased the results of my last English exam. A with B of C on D2. Uh, of course, if you just know what preposition come with the with the wor verb pleased, then it will be, you'll just do it without even thinking. Okay, so it's a kind of a phrasal verb question or a collocation if you'd like to to say this. Uh, so pleased always comes with what? Pleased with. So if you know pleased as a verb, come with which uh, comes with which pronoun then. You wouldn't have to answer to read even B, C, or D. So pleased with. Again, this is another type of uh, question they, they are testing you in. Phrasal verbs or collocations. 13. His school record is good. A, much. B, quite. C, more. And D, most. Of course, which, which words, there are three words you, you'll have to just eliminate and forget about them, or three options, sure much, sure more, and definitely most. Forget about these. So you're left with B, which is quite. So it's quite good, like very good. Uh, not, not so very, but it's the same, uh, like, like the same uh, meaning, okay, it can be like, uh, not so good, okay. Number 14. In some countries, dinner at 5 or 6 p.m. A, have eaten. B, have eaten. C, is eaten. And D, are eaten. So, again here, be careful with this sentence. There is no subject in here, okay? So what, if you don't have a subject, then where, which type of sentence we are dealing with? Yeah, sure, definitely it's a passive sentence. So what, which, which, which verb am I going to look at? Very good, it's C. And again here, dinner, singular, so it's is eaten. Okay, dinner is eaten. I don't care where about, I don't look at in some countries because I can find this coming at the end of the sentence. Okay, so I can have dinner is eaten at 5 or 6 p.m. in some countries. Okay, so this is not really, this is like a, a, a phrase which can come at the beginning or the end of, of, your, of your sentence. So it's not really important. Sure, it is eaten. 15, which question is correct English? So it's, is it A, what time do you know the movie starts? B, do you know what time the movie starts? C, the movie, what time do you know starts? And D, starts the movie, do you know what time? So, as you can see, these are questions. And definitely you try to look at which question, which, which form of the question is the most correct one. So sure, C and D, completely wrong. You, you don't even look at them because one of them starts with the movie, which, is, which you can't start, you can't form a question by, by using the movie, which is completely wrong. Again, D starts the movie, again, completely wrong. So we are left with A and B, and in here, this is, a, of course, is the most tricky one because I think some of the students are, well, will say what time really is the, the uh, start or the beginning of a question. And if you continue the question or the, of the, the question, if you say this is correct, then let's look at it. What time do you know the movie starts? Of course, if you have here, you know in the middle, this is something which you can't find in a question. Again, the other trick is this S in, the, uh, in, in this verb. And of course, if you know that in order to form a question without an auxiliary, you have to add an, an auxiliary verb, okay? So in this case, auxiliary is going to be does, because you have 
starts. So again, this one is not a correct question. So the question which is really correct is, do you know, because this type of question is yes, no question, and I'm, I'm looking for yes or no answer. So it's, do you know what time the movie starts? Okay, the question, really the question is, do you know? And not what time, okay? And here, this is a kind of like indirect question, which is asking about the time, uh, uh, the time when the movie starts, okay? So be careful with such questions. So the answer is B, do you know what time the movie starts? Sixteen. If Ali had fallen, he, the race, A, had to win, B, would have won, C, should have won, and D, would win. So, of course, if, if you again ask yourself a question, what are they testing me in, you'll find that you are being tested uh, in if conditional, which type? Yeah, sure. Third type. So, which which answer is the correct one? So, if Ali had not fallen, he, the race. Be careful with the negative here, okay? Not, he would have won the race. Okay, so if he did, if he didn't fall, in, in other words, if he didn't fall, he would he would uh, win the race. Okay, so if Ali had not fallen, he would have won the race. Seventeen, Mustafa just can't stop. A talk, B talking, C talked, and D talks. Again. If you just, again, as we said, think of what you are being tested in, you'll find that they are testing uh, you in the use of gerunds after some verbs, okay? So verb like stop, what should you put after it? Is it talking or talked or talks or talk? Sure, stop talking. And I think you hear it every day in class. All your teachers always tell you, stop talking, okay? So be careful with that. Always, mostly, after stop, you are to uh, use the gerund. Number 18, Paris is, I want to spend my next vacation. A, who, B, when, C, which, D, where? Okay, so Paris. Sure, there are about two, again, two answers. You just forget about them, okay? So A, who, I'm not, uh, be careful we say, we use who when we talk about people. So here, I'm, I'm, uh, are, we, are they talking about people or are they talking about place or thing or what? So. It's Paris, so it's never who. Again, Paris is never a play, is never a time. So B is completely wrong. When? What about which and where? Let's look at the continuation of the sentence. I want to spend my next vacation. So of course here to spend. Then I'm talking about a place. So then it should be where. What? What is the answer? Where? So Paris is where I want to spend my next vacation. So again, you uh, by this we'll come to the end of our uh, grammar part. Be careful that in the real CIPA test you'll have 40 questions of these. As I said before, we just chose some of them as as model. Okay, so you try to be careful. Mostly there'll be this on dealing with the same items, okay, gerunds, um, 
passives, uh, tenses, and so on. So be careful with, with them, okay? I, I know that you know your grammar very well. Now we look at another part, which is parts of speech. And as, we, uh, and as I said earlier, in this lesson, we, we just divided things into sections, but in the, on the, re, uh, the real SIPA exam, you'll have them all in one section, okay? So parts of speech in the real exam are only 10 sentences, okay? And as I think all your teachers always tell you that parts of speech are important, they are easy to know if you, if you know how to deal with them. Uh, of course, when we say parts of speech, it means that what we are dealing with verbs, nouns, adjectives, or adverbs. Okay? So, number one. I was feeling, so I stayed in bed all morning. A, laziness. B, lazy. C, lazily. And D, laze. Okay. In order to answer such a question and all the ten coming questions correctly, you try first to look at the sentence and to choose to think of what type of word should come in the space. Okay? So if you look at the space here, I was feeling so I stayed in bed. Okay? Be careful that here in this space we are not describing the verb, we are describing the state of the person. So in this, spa in this space, we are ready to choose an adjective, okay? And be careful, not all words that come after verbs are adverbs or should be adverbs, okay? So be careful with this. Again, this sentence could be one of the tricks in the, in the exam. So I was feeling which word of these is an adjective. If I know that I need to use an adjective in the space, then, of course, you know very easy which word is the adjective. Sure, it's lazy. So, I was feeling lazy, so I stayed in bed all morning. Okay? So, lazy uh, is the adjective. Laziness is the noun because it, ends, it has the suffix N-E-S-S. -S. Lazily, because it has the suffix L-Y, then it is an adverb. A lazy is a verb. Number two, she was wearing a pair of shoes, A, redly, B, red, C, redden, D, redness. So again here, a pair of what shoes? Okay, so you have shoes is a noun. So what, what word comes before a noun? Sure, what comes before a noun is an adjective, okay? So which word of, of these options is an adjective? Of course, redness, because it ends in N-E-S-S, -S, this shouldn't, is not an, uh, an adjective. Redden, again, isn't. So the adjective is red. So she was wearing a pair of red shoes. And as we said before, it can be like adjective like uh, good girl, okay, tall boy. And adjectives and nouns, they, as you know, they come together. So again, this, this is one of the easy sentences. Number three, the mother held her baby while crossing the busy street. A, protect. B, protection. C, protectively, and D, protective. As we said before, you try to look at the space and figure out what, what word should come in the space, okay? Uh, in some cases, you try to ask yourself a question with how. The answer to the, to you, to the question is going to be maybe the answer, uh, the correct answer. So if I ask myself a question like, how did the mother hold her baby? So, of course, how did she do it? She, she, she did it protectively. Then I need to put here an adverb. Okay? So, how did she hold her baby? She held uh, her baby protectively. And how did I know that this word is the adverb? 
because it ends in ly because I add to protective which is an adjective ly so it became uh, the adverb so the mother held her baby protectively while crossing the busy street again protectively here is describing the verb held okay number four <clears throat> my nephew likes to friends and family with magic tricks a entertaining b entertain c entertainment and d entertaining glee this i think it's could be again one of the easiest sentences in the exam so my nephew likes to and mostly when you find to what should you put after it show a verb because to and verb means the infinitive so to entertain so entertain here is the verb okay entertaining is the adjective form ending in ing and entertainment because we have n e and t at the end or the suffix m e and t then this is a noun and of course inter entertainingly is the adverb so when you find two you put the verb be entertained five a lot of was given to the national day events a publicity b public c publicize and d public publicly okay a lot of what should i put after a lot of i should try to put again as you know here a noun so which word is the noun as you know yes it's a because it ends in ty okay or ity so it is publicity so a lot of publicity and also be careful that after some words like a lot of many much uh, you trying to put a noun okay and if you just know some of the words and you try to rememorize them in the exam like a lot of girls a lot of boys okay so then you are going to use the noun a lot of publicity a six you have to work long hours if you want to in business a succeed b success c successfully d successful again this sentence is like this the other sentence we talked uh, we, we uh, dealt with in short time so two after two what should you put a verb sure which one is the verb no success is not the verb sure succeed is the verb so if you want to succeed in business a a is the correct answer number seven her room was painted with brightly colored flowers on the wall so was painted okay a imaginatively b imaginative c imagine and d imagination so her room was painted be careful how was her room painted yes imaginatively a because i have to put here in this space a uh, an adverb number eight some people believe that a mobile phone is a uh, nowadays again you have to look at the keyword here a uh, and be careful that after a uh, as an article you are either to use a noun or an adjective okay so we have here a a necessitate b necessary c necessity and d necessarily so as we said before you have the keyword here the article a and as you can say you can see it is what what word should that we use is a necessity which is the noun 
Sometimes, as I said now, after A as an article, you can use a, a noun or an adjective and then followed by a noun like a girl, which is the noun as in this case, or a beautiful girl, which is an adjective followed by a noun. Number nine, he jumped into the water without any. A, hesitantly. B, hesitation. C, hesitant. And D, hesitate. So, again, with the after any, as we said before, without any, sure, hesitation. Be careful again after some words like any, some, and so on. You, you try to use a noun, okay? Any boy, any girl, any bus, and so on. All these are nouns, as in this case, hesitation is the noun. Number 10, I, people who help others in their free time. Again, this is obvious. What should you put in this sentence? Subject I, and then there is no very important thing in the sentence, which is the verb. And then you have the continuation of the sentence. So what should you put here? A, admiration. B, admirably. C, admire. D, admirable. So should be what? Of course, the verb here is admire, because all the others are other parts of speech. Admiration is a noun, admirably is an adverb, admirable is an adjective. So you need here a verb, which is admire. So by this we come to the end of the parts of speech part, which goes with the grammar, and we'll, we'll move to the vocabulary. So we have, as we said before, section 3 in our lesson, but it's not section 3 in the exam, okay? Vocabulary is going to be dealt with grammar and parts of speech together in section 1, okay? So in the real CIFA exam, you'll have 40 sentences or 40 questions, okay? So be careful with that. Number 1. The bank required me to submit several before they could give me a loan. A, documents. B, proportions. C, outcomes. And D, frameworks. So be careful with some of the keywords in the sentence, which can help you to choose the correct answer. So, of course, submit. Submit what? Most of the time you submit something. Submit means to give. And so, of course, you have to give documents, okay? So this is for the bank. So this is, this is the only correct answer, documents, okay? So be careful with, in the, in the part of the vocabulary, you try to look at some of the key words in the statement or in the, question, in the sentence itself to help you choose the correct answer. Number two, in my opinion, is the best time of year in the Emirates. A, winter, B, wood, C, neighbor, and D, tour. Of course, best time, here is, it's obvious. The answer is clear. Best time, it has to do with time. And of course, wood, neighbor, and tour has nothing to do with time. So the only correct word here is winter. So it's A, winter is the best time of the year in the Emirates. Sure. Number three, the Al Ain football club was in their last match winning by a score of 2-0. A, shielded, B, victorious, C, annoying, and D, honest. So, Al Ain football club was, and of course, it means here they won by the score of 2-0, so... Which word is the correct one? Sure, it's B, victorious, because it means that they won. Okay, it comes from the word victory. This is an adjective of the noun victory, to win. Four, I often played with my Mohsen when I was young. A, protection. B, cousin. 
सी गिल्ट एंड दी फ्रूट so i often played with my mohsin when i was young which word is the correct answer of course mohsin is what is it guilt is it fruit is it is it protection completely wrong all three these three options are completely wrong so my cousin mohsin which is a relative okay five salem is a very young man he always knocks before entering a room And of course, a person when a person knocks knocks at the door. Okay, it's clear. A destructive, B steep, C explosive, and D polite. So sure, again, all A, B, C options are completely wrong. He's a very polite young man because he knocks before entering a room. So it's polite. Six. Do you know what the of last night's tennis match was a uh, scheme b technology c document and d outcome do you know what the of last night's tennis match was okay so of course here we need to know the result so another word for the result is d which is outcome Scheme technology document has nothing to do with the meaning of outcome or result. So the outcome means the result of the tennis match. Who won? In in other words, okay. So it's the outcome. Seven. Whenever I buy vegetables, I like to shop at our market. A. Whole. B. Local. C. Strong. And D. Recent. So whenever I buy vegetables, I like to shop at our, of course, market. It means the the market which is in the same place of your of the where where they are living. Okay, so it is sure B, which is local market. It means not any other market. So again, whole, strong, and recent has nothing to do with market. Okay, so the the correct answer here is local. Number seven, number eight, the service was not, so I complained to the manager. A trapped, B shielded, C satisfactory, and D greedy. So the service was not, in other words, was wasn't good. Okay, so that's why the person complained to the manager, say say that this is not good. So of course was not good. Then what is the, what is other word here which means not good? Yes, satisfactory. Very good. So the service was not satisfactory. So I complained to the manager. Nine. I like taking my children to the park because it's a very safe for them to play in. A. Source. B. Policy. C role, D environment. Of course, source, policy, role. These three options could not fit into this sentence because I'm looking at the park. So the only word which can which can uh, uh, be the correct answer is of course D environment uh, because it's a very safe environment for them. And here environment is another word for place. It it doesn't mean the environment which you know, okay? So in this case, it means place. Simple as that. Ten. The teacher asked the boy what his was for being late. A. Excuse. B. Net. C. Flame. D. Destruction. So of course, being late, and most of the time we ask we ask our students. For their excuse for being late. Very good. So the teacher asked the boy what he, what his excuse for being late. Eleven. I think two American dollar is to one English pound. A. External. B. Equivalent. C. 
precise and stable. So, of course, here I think two American dollars is to one English pound. And here, what we mean here is equal. Okay, so another word for equal from try to look at the options. Yeah, it's B, equivalent, which means equal. Well, there are 15 in our textbook, so we'll need to cover one per week. A, desires, B, units, C, marks, D, bases. So, of course, 15, what in the textbook? So, it has something to do with the book. What, what could you find in the book? Okay, it's divided into what? Okay, sure, it's divided into units. So the correct answer is B, units. So by this, we come to the end of the uh, vocabulary part. As, of course, here we, we uh, just chose samples. In your vocabulary test, as I, as I said before, you'll have 40 sentences, okay? Again, we chose some of them. In order to answer the, the vocabulary part correctly, you try to figure out which word to choose. There are key words in the sentences which can help you and lead you to the correct answer. By this, we come to the end of our lesson today and to our last lesson in the whole program. I hope that you have benefit, benefited from all the uh, pieces of advice we, uh, we gave you. I hope that uh, by the end of the exam, you try to use some of them and try to use some of the strategies and techniques we talked about today. Wish you best of luck. Thank you so much.